Welcome to Brainstorming America. I'm Ken Rollins, here with John Merrill. Good to see you, John. Ken, always good to be with you. It's been a long time. No doubt. We had went through the Olympics and all that stuff since I saw you. Uh, folks don't realize that. We don't see each other that often, about every three months, something like that, Ann. Something like that. Thank goodness it's not that long. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I forget who you are at now. I'm just kidding. Uh, we, we skipped over something. When I was talking about uh, Walt, the VP pick, uh, he has got a law in his state. He, he ran a, he was a motivator behind this law about he couldn't tell, he would not accept a warrant regarding a child having sex change in school. If a kid wanted to have a sex change in the state of Minnesota, he will not honor a warrant that the parent might have. So you kid, you send your kid to school with Bubba and bring him back at Betty. I mean, this is... That's the problem. It is. <laughs> and, but, I mean, this is, this is the kind of reality that's out there that some of these states is like that. Uh, man, I, I just hope I never have to go make a misturn and go through a city like that. But I, I just thought, throw that on because I had as a note that to, to say you could send your child to school and they have do mutilation on it and they not have not recognize a warrant from your parents and that's something. That is a major problem, but it's where our country has headed today, and it's something that we have to give attention to so it does not continue to permeate all 50 states in the union and then go down to our local county structure or our municipal structure because the basic concept for effective governance starts in the home. It starts with a man and a wife who are married, who have their children, who raise their children according to the Bible and the teachings of the Bible and if they have a different religion according to the religious values of their religion but trying to mold them to be productive citizens who are compliant with law enforcement, who want to find a way to contribute to their society and improve the quality of life in the area where they live. That's what America is all about, and that's the American way. Thank you, and amen on that. Um, something I know, now people might think this is not anything to worry about, but the Taylor Swift incident, I know you probably kept up on that. They was the ISIS, everybody knows about ISIS, used to behead people. ISIS had planned a uh, car bomb loaded enough to take out thousands of people to run into the middle of a Taylor Swift concert. Taylor Swift, reason being, she pulls packed houses everywhere she goes. And Guess what the age limit of her groups, her fans are? 12 to 15 years old. Yeah, most of her followers are in that age group. So you'd kill a bunch of children. That's what they want to do. And guess what? We have allowed over 900 of them to enter our country, Alabama, other places that they've come in through the southern border. They're on the list, 900 terrorists. So this is what has happened with Kamala Harris. Our borders are. She says she's not the borders are. I say she didn't act like one, but that's what her title was. I'd listened on the way to work this morning uh, on the way here. And it was about, they was playing pieces where she had been referred to by the ABC, NBC, all those things as the borders are wearing it like a badge of honor. She went into office, nobody knew anything about her, but they, to give her some recognition, they knew that we had a problem with the border. So she was gonna be the border czar to give her some visibility. So now- well, if you're gonna be the border czar, it'd be good to it. go to the border. Yeah, she didn't want to go. She said, I haven't been to the border, but I haven't been to Europe. That was her statement to NBC. She said, I haven't been to Europe either. So 
said, this is, this is what's bad. <clears throat> is we got somebody threatening to blow up and kill. They had to cancel her concert. I think it was in Vaina, Vaina, Vaina. And she was, is that right, Vaina? <laughs> I think they say Vienna. Okay. Vaina is that. at the sausage that's and that's at the I, grocery store. I want some of them right now. And some crackers. Any crackers? That's right. <laughs> Those are good out on the boat when you're fishing. You're fishing with worms. Or you got when you're hunting. <laughs> or it's a nice snack. No, you missed the thing when you got them oily worms on your hand <laughs> and then you grab your, your sausage. Oh my goodness. We don't have an office right there. I noticed too something I don't keep up with so much about abortion clinics, but they now have switched over kind of like a service station will do tire service. They are now doing just abortion, but they're doing test, they make me say this word right, testosterone uh, work. They're working with trans in your uh, abortion clinics. They're funded by, well, I guess in a roundabout way, they're funded by us. But we think they, I mean, they done, they done breached out. They done reached out and uh, gone from just abortion to trans thing. Well, that's through the transitioning system that people go through whenever they are a man and they wish to become a woman. And whenever they do that, then they have to go through that process. And we know that you also are transitioning from watching the program that was on before ours to this one. We're excited you've chosen to join us for the 69th episode of Brainstorm in America. We'll see you back right after this first break. Welcome back to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins and uh, here with John Merrill. And John, we we'll transitioned to the last break. Uh, we we're talking about abortion clinics, but I want to. We've talked so much about the Olympics and praising all the things that happened. Something that really bad happened was that boxing match with that girl. Yes. And that was from Algeria. 46 seconds, I think she. Yes. She like. Can you imagine being hit by? Uh, What's that guy's name? Uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yes. That's about the way she acted like she felt. That'd be Kicked a bad by day you. getting hit by Mike Tyson. I don't yeah. care how old he is. Well, when she, the leg she took from that guy was about saying she said she'd never been hit that hard. And to put them in a place like that, and they started talking about all the different things she used to be, she or he or whatever, used to be the way it born and all that stuff. He still got the testosterone of the man. Well, apparently she's a homorphodite. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know how many of our viewers are familiar with that term, but it's basically a term that's used primarily on the farm where you have an animal that's born with male parts and female parts, and they have a homorphodite born as opposed to just the appropriate male or female gender. And whenever that happens, then that individual, uh, in this instance an animal, would have to be processed in order to make it functional for whatever purpose it was intended to serve. But apparently she was born with some male tendencies or parts and some female tendencies or parts. and. Uh, she has actually always been recognized as a female. She's competed in activities as a female, but because of her size and because of her uh, strength and because of her testosterone, a lot of people were thinking that she was a male and that she had been qualified as a female to compete and give Algeria an advantage in the boxing area. I can tell you she won the gold medal. Uh, there were a lot of people that were concerned about what had happened simply because she'd been disqualified before from international competition. So it'll be interesting to see what revisions come out of Olympic competition because of this particular boxer and because of the chaos that ensued after her performance. Well, it's going to be held in America next, and we, I am too. I'm interested to see how they're going to do that because that was uh, that was obvious that was wrong for this girl. It was just like the uh, with the swimming deal with Leah Thomas and all that. You know that was uh, 
the males are just built uh, different. And this guy, you could see that it was a man, but he had been banned from the IOC, whatever that is. He had, International uh, Olympic Committee. He had already been banned Which is from the it. governing body yeah. of competition for Olympic athletes. And had been banned from it before because of his testosterone, that he was a male uh, in a sense of what they were looking at. But I, I tell you, that was, uh, that was very, seeing that girl on her knees crying like that, she just, to train all those years, taking all those licks upside the head, all those things that a boxer does to beat one lick, any rate, 46 seconds. That was awful. Um, giving over to another thing. I'd look at, it seemed like every day, if not every day, but every other day, kind of. You see a different body camera or some film of the attempted assassination of our president, uh, Trump, up in uh, Pennsylvania. And now it's got turned around. I showed some last week from the local Bedford police saying, we told the Secret Service. And then somebody says, who's we? He said, I told a sergeant, whatever I write. So I told the Secret Service they need to put somebody on that building. Of it. And he asked why. He said, because that's a straight level to the, where the president will be. You got witnesses of local police, but everybody knows anything about that. Secret Service is in charge of everything. Local police don't have any say in what happens at one of those events. I've been to them, done no at work. So we are in a bad situation when we've lost faith in one of our the highest. I mean, I. I if I was in a group of people of, and it's FBI, Secret Service, CIA, local police, the one I'd be fearing the most, Secret Service, I, I would be very, very respected to them. Now, it seems like they're the laughing stock until somebody fixes what's broke. Well, and it is broken, and it is going to have to be repaired, and it's going to have to be repaired by people that have credibility, that have integrity, and that have character, and it's going to have to be repaired to the specifications of the Congress, and the Congress has gotten in it now. They've had the hearings. Uh, we'll be looking for a report soon to see what their assessment is of what occurred and what needs to be addressed in order to return the type of credibility that the Secret Service has always had. But it's in many ways just like the Federal Bureau of Investigation. When I was growing up, the FBI was recognized as the number one law enforcement agency in the world. And people were proud to know that you had any affiliation with the FBI. And subsequently, what we've seen over the last few years is a problem with credibility. But we're excited that you've chosen to join us for this week's episode, the 69th episode of Brainstorm in America. We'll come back right after this break for the final segment. Welcome back to Brainstorming America. Ken Rollins here with John Merrill. John, we uh, we got a situation as we sit here today in the Mideast. We brought in our big ships, the Roosevelt. We've got them all lined up in there expecting big things from Iran to they're going to get back, punish uh, Israel. And we've got to defend Israel. But when people out there is watching, know that when you do anything that part of the country, you're looking at Lebanon, you're looking at Jordan, you're looking at Saudi, you're looking at a lot of countries that are on the tip of the sword right in that area. Absolutely. So we could end up being in a horrible, horrible situation before Biden leaves office. Because if, if somebody's going to act, a bad guy sitting over there acting, do they want to take a chance on Donald Trump coming back at the, to the helm? They don't, I don't think so. I don't think so either. And I think that's one of the things that is so interesting about 
Vice President Harris' selection of Governor Tim Walz as her running mate. I had anticipated that she would select Josh Shapiro, who okay. is Jewish, who is the governor of Pennsylvania, as a running mate because Pennsylvania is so important to the success of the Democrats and the Republicans in the presidential election. They need to have those electoral votes that Pennsylvania has in order to maintain a stronghold no matter which side you're on. But Vice President Harris obviously made a statement about her lack of support for Israel when she chose Governor Walz as her running mate. And that has caused a lot of concern and a lot of confusion. Another thing that we've seen is because of the lack of support that certain members of Congress, including a couple of members of the squad, have expressed, the APAC folks in New York and Washington have come together and invested millions of dollars in primary races in order to ensure their defeat so they would not be returning to Washington as a member of Congress. And there are a lot of people that are excited about that because with those people being gone, a more solid base of support for the Jewish people, for the Jewish country, will be evident in Washington with those voices being silenced at the polls. APAC won. Yes, sir. Two of them are gone. Yes, sir. Two of the, what are they, like four or six of them, of the the, uh, the, what do they call them? The squad. Squad. And AOC is one of those. Wouldn't it be something if that APAC comes into New York like they have in other places, Minnesota and other, and Omar. Omar is uh, targeted. So it's, they're not playing folks. These, uh, these people have been causing trouble. You've been watching all these um, protests. But prior, prior to the filming of this particular episode, Ken, I think it should be noted that Omar was renominated by her party and will be on the general election ballot November the 5th to serve another term as their member of Congress. Come on. Yes, sir. Man, I just found out Elvis died a while ago. Yes, sir. Now you're <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm not. We, we're going to keep dragging you with us. <laughs> you knew about Elvis? Yes, sir. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, I hate to hear that. I thought she, she's going to be one of, the, one of the squad. But anyhow, APAC has put their money where their mouth is and said, these people have been protesting at Harvard, Columbia, and all these places. This is the, the ones that are anti-Israel. And they've been, they were all for Hamas. Hamas, the group that on October the 7th beheaded all those people in Israel, remember that. This is the group that Kamala Harris chose Walt over a Jewish uh, person who everybody, I thought, wanted him. I, I was going to bet money he was going to be in. I, I was expecting because that he to be was the, the best. Case. Absolutely. Not because and he, the one that would cause the Republicans the biggest problem. Absolutely. And I was worried more as a, a Republican. I was worried more about him than Shapiro than I was anybody that she could pick. But she went over and got the weakest of the weak. And uh, so I, I guess that's so she wouldn't have any competition. Uh, get somebody that's worse off than I am. And that way you, I'm better. Uh, let's see what I've left off here. Oh yeah, uh, we sitting here today, the folks out there watching us, I hope they are, hey there, how y'all doing? Um, we still got two people up in space. Can't that's, get home. That's correct. They can't two get home. NASA astronauts that are up in space. Yeah. In the space station. Two of our people that are stranded, and the word is stranded. They can get home under certain circumstances, but those are risky, as they say. But we got we got two people. Why are you sitting and sitting there eating your tuna fish sandwich? Uh, we got two people stranded in space. Y'all aware of that? Man, it's only, you're only going to get that here. We're going to tell you back because I didn't see nothing. I saw nothing on the news about it today. Uh, I thought about the Middle East is on there. Uh, how's it? You been? You left the uh, department, State Department, what, a year or so ago? 
January the 15th, 2023 was my last day as our 53rd so Secretary of State. you've been out over a year. How's it working out at Wagner? How's that going? Things are going extraordinarily well. We continue to generate new business for the company and to expand our presence in transforming communities throughout the state, working as hard as we can in the 464 municipalities in our 67 counties. We continue to grow. I had a conversation about you the other day. Fellow says, well, what, is, what is John Merrill doing now? And I told him he's working for an engineering company. Wagner, what's he doing there? I said, well, let me tell you something. When you turn on your TV or you turn on your social media, uh, you followed uh, John Merrill over the years. What's he do? Well, he's everywhere. That's right. Who would you want representing you more? Somebody who sits around in the headquarters office in Hoover or somebody who's going to be out there with the people. And he knows most of the local mayors and whatever. That was, and, he, and it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, now I see. So it was like a glove that fit good. For sure. Time. Well, just I, yesterday I was in Rockford, and then I was in Ashland, and then I was in Heflin, and then I was in Huntsville before returning to Tuscaloosa, which is where my day began. So I you was know all over most, the state yesterday. You know most of the dogs by name, and you know, you know the, you know the mayors and the people like that. It gets you through the door. Yes, sir. To help them, but yes, sir. Uh, the one thing that I, I was telling this person who is in education. Yes, sir. I told him, I said, you know, there's so many cities, little, big, and in between, that don't realize there's something out there to help them. That's exactly right. But we're here to help you and keep you informed. We'll see you next week for the next episode of Brainstorm in America.